The Credit Show Podcast with Harry Jacobs starts now. Got a little top 10 list for you today. The top 10 things that debt collectors are not allowed to do. Debt collection agencies and, and, and collectors are a huge topic on, on this show. So I thought I would throw together a list of the, the top 10 violations as I see them that debt collectors make. Things you need to be aware of. So before and listen, before getting into this, I, I want to give you a little disclaimer, which I, I do give from time to time. And that is that, you know, debt collectors aren't bad people. They're, they're just doing a job just like you and I they are doing that job because, you know, you or I defaulted on a debt. It's pretty simple. Now, how they do that job, how they conduct themselves as they're collecting on those debts is critical. And it's a matter of federal law. That law is called the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And it was put into place like any other law to protect consumers and to provide a level of guidance for collectors. Now, it doesn't mean that it applies to everyone collecting on, on money or debts. It, it only applies to first parties, meaning that let's say you have a debt that's overdue from Verizon. And, and when your bill is due, they call you two or three or four times a day. They will cause your phone to ring. Right Now, debt collectors are not allowed to do that because they're third parties and the rule is there for them. But first parties, when you owe someone the money directly, they can cause your phone to ring two or three or four times. So, so there's a difference between people chasing you for money that actually own that money, right? Own your account, rather, or people that are servicing or bought the debt in terms of how they have to behave. So as soon as your debt becomes delinquent with, you know, with Verizon, it's likely they will start, you know, that series of phone calls. Now, if it goes delinquent and you go into collection, you'll end up hearing from a third party. And that party has to follow these rules, the, the top 10 violations. I put them together for you right now. So let me, let me get through them. A collection agency cannot ask you to pay more than you owe. This is a common question when people call. They say, well, you know, I had this bill, I had that bill, and that's what it was in the beginning. And now, you know, it's this amount. They're forbidden from asking for more. They can't misrepresent that you owe more than you do. Right, that's number one. Number two, they're not allowed under the FDCPA to ask you to pay fees or interest or other expenses. This kind of dovetails with one, which are not allowed by law, and they've been added to your agreement, and and they're not called out in your agreement. That term is called contractually liable. If you're not contractually liable, oftentimes people will say, "Well, I, you know, this bill was, you know, three hundred, and now it's." $1,200, those fees are often in the contract that they can add them, and those are those are fine. It is very rare, by the way, that we see people add fees that are not legal, that are not called out, that you're not contractually liable for. Number three in the top 10 most common things debt collectors do, they can't call you repeatedly or continuously. Generally, it's one call a day. That's considered the max from a third party to you. You may not even be aware that, you know, about that. And if you want the calls to stop, don't want to be contacted on the phone again, all you have to do is tell them to stop calling. Just say cease the phone calls. I happen to think it's a good idea to put it into writing for them. If you've got their address, just ask for their address. Hey, can I have your address? And send them a note certified. Say, I I want you to stop calling me. Don't ever call me again. They'll write to you. It doesn't make the debt go away, but but it will stop the annoying phone calls. Number four, calls can only happen in a certain window by law, and that's between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. And, and that law is pretty strict. They can't call you at, at 7.58 or 7.57 or 9.01 or 9.02, right? Even a couple minutes before or a couple minutes after is considered harassment. Number five, a call to your cell phone these days is considered a call to work. So if you've let a debt collector know that you can't get calls during a certain time, like I, you know, I work Monday through Friday, nine to five, and that collector calls you 
after you've told them you work Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and you can't get calls at work, that's a violation. By the way, with any of these violations, you are eligible for us to assist you at no cost and then for us to hand you off to get you free legal help. It's a simple process. You're eligible for free legal help under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Number six, collectors are prohibited from using obscene, profane, or abusive language. We hear periodically that sometimes collectors will get rough with folks, calling them deadbeats or swearing, asking why they don't pay their bills. I heard from one client who said a collector said, well, you're obviously driving your car. Why would you pay for your car and not pay this bill that you owe us? That kind of stuff. Can't do it. Can't can't harass somebody. Number seven, they can't threaten action that they're not going to take. First of all, on this topic, they can't threaten to file charges against you. That's illegal. That's a scam. That's a hallmark of a scam. Or they can't take away or freeze your social security number if you don't pay the bill. They can't report you to the DMV and have your license taken away. Obviously, in most states, you can lose your license because of a child support issue if you don't pay, but not on a, a credit card bill. If a collection agency is not intending to sue you, they cannot say that. Number eight, sometimes when a debt collector is looking for somebody, they will contact a third party. That's called a skip trace. They may reach out to your office or friends or neighbors or you know, they'll use that skip trace in any way they can, a background check to get phone numbers of people that you've got a relationship with of some sort and then try to find you in that way. A lot of people wonder if it's legal, and, and it is. But there's a fine line with it, and there are two important factors to consider. First is that they can't call the same person again after that person has said, listen, I don't know how to reach so-and-so. The other important thing to remember is that they can't provide information about why they're calling, meaning they can't say, my name's, you know, Joe Blow from, you know, Acme Collections. And your friend owes me money. They cannot disseminate information to a third party about the reason they're calling. They're only allowed to say it's a matter of personal business. The call's a matter of personal business. And they can leave a number to call back. Now, sometimes debt collectors will miss what they're supposed to do that's so important, which is to send the validation notice within five days of making contact with you. So you're not required to ask for that validation notice. I always ask for people to, to do that. But as soon as they've made contact with you, they are required by law to actually send you one of those letters. Doesn't always happen like that. It's one of the reasons I bring it up. Number 10, the final one, the top 10 most common, in my opinion, things that happen with debt collectors that that are lawbreakers, and it's a big one. And that's if you ask for that validation right after you've asked for it. They are prohibited from asking you for any money on that debt until the validation is sent to you, meaning any attempts to collect on that money must cease immediately. So they can't say to you, fine, we'll send you the debt validation letter, but can you pay something today? What can you pay today? That's illegal. So there's your list. I, I just want to remind you that if something that I've covered here has happened to you or you've got a question about something else, I can help you at no cost. You're also entitled to an attorney, as I said, under the fee shifting provision with the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act if there's been a violation. And I'm happy to help you with that. You just have to take the first step, however, and pick up the phone and let me know there's a problem. You've been listening to The Credit Show podcast with Harry Jacobs. If you need assistance with your credit, text CREDIT to 702-778-2000.